Good morning and welcome to our devotionals for this week. When I was asked to do this, I thought I would share with you from a book that I found a couple of years ago by Ken Geyer. It's a devotional book on the life of Jesus. He gives the scripture portion, then a devotional, and ends with prayer. So I thought that I would share some of his writings with you this week. This morning we're going to look at Matthew chapter 1, the first 16 verses, Matthew's family tree. I'm not going to read the names in that family tree today, but I will refer to it. To a Jew, this long list of names was the most natural and indeed most essential way to begin the story of a man's life. It is interesting to note that it is not normal to find names of women in the Jewish pedigree at all. The women were not even regarded as a person. So the very existence of women's names is most surprising and extraordinary in this family tree. One commentator said if Matthew had ransacked the pages of the Old Testament for improbable candidates, he could not have discovered four more incredible ancestors for Jesus than these four women who are mentioned. I will let you go through the names and discover them for yourself. This family tree is rooted in Israel's greatest patriarch, Abraham, and its greatest king, David, and the fruit of that tree is Jesus. Ever since the ruin of Eden, all creation has awaited its Savior, the promised seed that would one day come. The hope of such a Savior was a universal longing. Within Israel, the hope was more distinct. The dream was more vivid. It was the hope of every expectant mother and every pacing father the dream of a savior, and the hope that he would soon come. The savior would come from a royal line, that much everyone knew, and the line would originate with Abraham and branch through David. Yet despite how sturdy its trunk and how spreading its limbs, the savior's family tree had its share of bent twigs and broken branches. Abraham, for example, a man of faith, but a man who also lied, sending his wife into the arms of Pharaoh and putting the promised seed in jeopardy. And then there was David. He was, the scripture tells us, a man after God's own heart. But he was also a man after other things, Bathsheba for one. And Ruth was a foreigner, an unexpected graft, since, mar since marriage to foreigners were forbidden by Jewish law, and there are more. And when we've gone through the entire line, we're left scratching our head wondering, what are we to make of this tree through whose branches came the Savior of the world? What are we to make of all the sin, all the imperfections, all the failures? Well, simply this, that God's purposes are not thwarted by our humanity, however weak and wayward it may be, that he works in us and through us and sometimes even in spite of us, that he works with us as a gardener works with his garden, lifting, pruning, watering, weeding, whatever it takes to bring it to fruition, or however long it takes. And this is our hope, that season after season, he walks the uncultivated fields of each generation. His careful eyes watch over the growth, watching over the budding faith of the young and over the branching influence of the old. 
And then the prayer, thank you God, that the genealogy of your son is a lineage of grace, a testimony to teach of your love throughout the generations. Thank you for reaching across the generations for me and for ever so patiently grafting me into that tree. Thank you for the firmness of your hand and the tenderness of your touch. I have needed both at one time or another and doubtless I will need both again. Continue to do whatever it takes to bring me to a place where I have something to offer others. O oh Lord, who watched so faithfully over those families who waited for the Savior to come, watch over our families as we wait for him to come again. Amen.